Are we doing the wave? Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. There you go. That's the response. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, as they say, we're back. missing one of the trio today, though. Uh, keep Pastor Linda in your prayers. We'll pray for her a little bit later, but she took a fall. Oh, no. Uh, and is yes, uh, recovering from that, so keep her in prayer. And uh, well, let's start with a word of prayer, and then I'll let Ross do our announcements and, okay. and get us moving. Maybe. Come Holy Spirit. Come Lord Jesus. This is your day. And we want to be here with you. We want you to be here with us. Lord, we come with uh, a lot of stuff going on in our lives and around us. Help us this hour to be truly present with you. Lord, not for our own sakes, but that we might leave here changed to be ready to do the work that you've given to us. So bless us, strengthen us, renew us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to do some singing in just a moment. Let me share with you a few things that are going on here. And uh, we we have a Fourth of July picnic coming up, as you know, on Thursday night. I have my hundred round. That's okay. I'm glad you bring your own. John. <laughs> I hope it's not your bottle. It's your book. You your own book. And. Uh, so that's going to be a great time of uh, a picnic plus a concert. We're going to have some of the best of uh, Lakeview's uh, talent singing uh, patriotic songs and that type of thing at the concert. So that will be fun. And Bob, Robert Wilson is going to be playing some music during the dinner of patriotic nature. So that will be an addition to that. Give me a drive there or I'll be okay. Okay. You will have, we'll have fun there. He promises. Vacation Bible School is coming up, and in your bulletin, there's a yellow slip. If you haven't signed up yet, we're making it easier for you to sign up and uh, make your plan to be with us for Vacation Bible School. That's going to be a great time. And uh, Ron has got a lesson uh, planned, or a Bible study planned, uh, following in the footsteps of Jesus, and should be good. Anything you want to say about that, Ron? That it is adult, and the adults can come and behave like children. That's right. <laughs> That's my mom. <laughs> We're also providing transportation to those who may not be able to drive. Okay, if you can't drive by the snow, ASAP, and we'll be glad to get you. There'll be food there. Bring you. Be lots, of, lots of snacks and food, That's comfort right. food. That's right. And then we'll have some creative exercises and some good things going. It really is a fun night to get Now, you're going to have Christmas in July, so if you're, as you're doing your shopping, uh, socks for the homeless is going to be our our uh, item for the month of July. And at the Vacation Bible School, they bring them in. We're going to put them on a Christmas tree. Put them on a Christmas tree at Sloot Hall. And yeah. That's the way we'll, we'll sock it to you that way. That's right. Yeah. All right. The Brazil Mission. The, is fully funded. Jim and Carol Woo! are fully funded. Woo! Thank you for your generosity. And the Heifer Project, we have a, a goal of setting up $5,000 for reaching it by October. And uh, if we do that, the foundation has voted that they have some money that they've made in, in investments and stuff. And they're going to match that five hundred. So instead of 5000 they're going to, instead of the 252 families, it'll be 504 families that we help. So we want you to get that makes a difference in how you're uh, planning on giving to the Heifer Project. Uh, let that be your, your guide. The Valley View Food Bank is in need of uh, a lot of things. Any canned goods, anytime are good. The non-perishables are good all the time. But the specific item for next Sunday that we're going to be collecting is peanut butter and jam or jelly, whichever one. The old fans, the favorite. All right. All right, I think that's all we have. Anybody else know of anything that's going on that we need to know about? No need to remember? No okay. New want, people? Want to find out if we've got some new folks here? I know we've got at least one or two or three. <laughs> I've already been told who's here for the first time. Okay. <coughs> what are your names? 
I'm Jeannie Lewis. Oh, yeah, I'm Jeannie. From First United Methodist. Okay, I can see you, Jeannie. And you are? Jesus. Jesus. Good to have you with us, Jesus. God bless you, brother. Where are you from originally? Mexico. Mexico. Okay, Jeannie, where are you from? Florida. Florida. Okay. <laughs> Good to have you folks with us. And Jack is back here. Good to be with you. San Francisco. <laughs> Woo! He didn't leave his heart there. He brought it with him. All right. That's a good thing. Anybody else here for the first time? Continue to invite your friends and neighbors during the summer, because in the summer months, some of their, some of the people leave. I don't know why. But they leave. <laughs> and uh, I actually I do know why, but I, uh, yeah, I tend to ignore it. So I will do that. All right. Let's start over here on the left. Anybody have a song they want to sing? He's got one. Let me start over here. Morning has broken. 145. 145. Morning has broken.
14 in the garden. Oh, yeah. In the garden. Yeah. 314. 314. <laughs> that good singing. We hope there is peace in the world and peace in our own hearts sometimes. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, that can happen for us even now. If you look at the insert of your bulletin, the last page, the back of the last page, you'll see a prayer list there. We hope that you're using this during the week as a prayer guide to write down the names of others that are mentioned during this service. So there are usually pencils in the pew in front of you, or you can write those in. Um, in addition to those who have lost loved ones, um, the brother-in-law of Diane Bob Herschelman, uh, what was that fellow's uh, name? You wrote it down? I, I wrote it down, but I don't have it with me. Okay, all right. He uh, passed away this last week, so I want to keep Bob and Diane and the family in your prayers. Also, um, Cheryl, John is here. And uh, Cheryl's in therapy, uh, getting some good exercise and therapy and trying to make the most of what she has uh, to be able to recover from her re most recent surgery and to gain some strength before she goes home. She's at Freedom Plaza Care Center. It's room 115 still, John? 111. 111. Okay, they switched her. 111 there. And you enter from the east side of, uh, of that, of that uh, 
facility for off of Pleasanton. Richard, Richard Cook is the brother-in-law's name, Bob and Diane. Also, uh, Connie Heidi was in rehab this last week, but she was released. And uh, Jackie Mobed has finished some therapy, I understand, but is going to be continuing in some other uh, cancer-related therapy. Future surgeries, Tom McLaughlin has had several procedures on his eyes. I'm not sure. I think this is a heart procedure. Our homebound person, many of you know, not Lilas Riley, a good gal, a ranch lady from South Dakota, and lives over here at El Dorado, is our homebound person. We love to, have, she'd love to get a card or a letter or a note or a call from you. So uh, there's her information, her contact information. You can call the church office if you don't have a church directory. If you don't have a church directory and you'd like to have one, drop by the office and ask them for one. It's a, it's a, we call it the funny book. It's the pictorial directory, and uh, it helps you to identify faces with names. And uh, okay, also we have listed here Alice Colson uh, in hospice. We have four others in hospice care. You'll notice in your bulletin. Also Joyce Raidersdorf uh, is going through quite a depression, having lost her husband Don several weeks ago, and uh, we want to continue to pray for Joyce and support her and encourage her. Any others that you would like to add to this? Denny? Yeah, I, I need our prayers. That's what you know about. Okay. Vi that sits with uh, Kathy DuPont back here on the back stage, uh, on the back row, uh, needs our prayers. I'm just repeating. Yes, Look, Jan. We need to have praise for all these wonderful people Amen. who show up at 8 o'clock, new people and regular people on this, in the middle of the summer at Spanish. Yes. So. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yvonne? Okay. Yeah. It's never a minor surgery when it's on you. It's, uh, it's the way it goes. Yes, Fred. My, my friend Ralph Arthur in Colorado had a stroke yesterday. So Ralph Arthur in Colorado had a stroke. Okay. Any others that you'd like to mention? Vicki? The immigrants that are in the camps that, are, that have no soap and water, no toothbrush, toothpaste. Yeah. The Central American Im immigrants that are in facilities where they don't have any uh, water or any food for them right now, they're scrambling, I think, to be able to provide for that. Yes. Uh, I have a blessing. Uh, 35 years ago today, my wife married a wonderful man. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to let that one go right on by. <laughs> How many years ago? 35. 35 years. Okay. That's, that's good. Yes. Jim. We just celebrated our 60th. 60th anniversary. Okay. Okay. We don't, this is not a competition. This is. We're happy for all of you, happy, happy for you. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Thank you, wonderful, loving God, that you have given us this time to come to you and that you hear us, that you love us, Lord. You accept us just the way we are, and you have been patient with us in so many ways, and we thank you for that. We pray that you would continue to grow us closer to Christ each day as we seek you through your word and through prayer, through fellowship with other believers, and through putting our faith to work, Lord, each day as we face frustrations and disappointments and difficulties, Lord, help us to know that you are there and that you care. We pray especially, Lord, for these that have been mentioned. We pray, Lord, for Yvonne as she's facing eye surgery. We pray for Vi, Lord, that you would help her to feel better and stronger. 
for Joyce Raidersdorf that you would lift her spirits, for Alice Colson, and for others that we have on hospice, Jean Folks, Dean Heinzerling, Dean Hutchins, Addie Lytle. We pray ye for each, Lord, that you would help them to experience a peace that passes all human understanding. We pray for the Herschelmans and the loss of this brother-in-law. We pray, Lord, for Ralph and uh, the, that he would recover from this stroke and for the immigrants without water and food and good facilities, Lord, that are so, so anxious to have a better life that they're willing to risk their lives to come to this country. We pray, Lord, for the Jobs. We thank you for their uh, 35th wedding anniversary and for Jim and wife and their 60 years together, Lord. We pray, Lord, for each uh, of our uh, married couples, Lord, that they would experience your peace and your love and that they would be unselfish in the way they share their lives with each other. We pray, Lord, for those that especially need your care. We pray for Lilas Riley, who would love to be coming to worship service, but is just not able any longer. And we pray for our vacation Bible school coming up, that it will bring people closer to Christ. We pray, Lord, for our giving in this church, that you would help meet some of these goals that people who are without food and without a way to make a living might be able to be sustained through this heifer project and through other things that are coming up. We thank you for the victories, Lord, that we've experienced. We thank you for these that are visiting for the first time, that you would help them to feel at home and loved and appreciated. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus, who gives us new life each day and brings us to a point in our lives where we recognize that we're not perfect, but we are loved. And we now pray the prayer that he gave us our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, John's sermon today is out to sea. I told him my sermon on the 14th of July is going to be out to lunch. <laughs> now, I'm often accused of that, but I'm really with you today. All right. But the scripture <clears throat> that it's in your bulletin on the front page of the insert is from Psalm 107, verses 23 to 32. Hear now the word of the Lord. Some of you set sail in big ships. You put out to sea to do business in faraway ports. Out at sea, you saw God in action, saw his breathtaking ways with the ocean. With a word, he called up the wind, an ocean storm, towering waves. You shot high in the sky. Then the bottom dropped out. Your hearts were stuck in your throats. You were spun like a top. You reeled like a drunk. You didn't know which end was up. Then you called out to God in your desperate condition. He got you out of the nick of time. He quieted the wind down to a whisper, put a muzzle on the big waves, and you were so glad when the storm died down, and he led you safely back to harbor. So thank God for his marvelous love, for his mir miracle mercy to the children he loves. Lift high your praises when the people assemble. Shout hallelujah when the elders meet. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right. Thank you, Ross. So I do want to mention my, uh, he's not really a visitor anymore, but my dad's with us this morning over, over yonder. I don't, this is the first time you've been at this service, I think. So he's, he's an early riser too. So <laughs> down staying with us this week. So glad you're with us, dad. Yeah. Um, it's good to be back with you. I want to thank Luther and Marilyn for uh, pinch hitting last week and, and blessing you with the word. Isn't uh, Luther a wonderful storyteller? Yeah, absolutely gifted, and, and we're blessed to, to have them as a part of our body today. Um, I'm kind of dovetailing in on what uh, Ross said about uh, 
uh, our work with uh, Jim and Carol Smith. Jim, of course, is our uh, head of maintenance here at the church, and they're off on their way to uh, Brazil in July. And I'll tell you, we not only met their goals, they had to raise 8400 bucks for the two of them to be able to go. Uh, and you, along with other people they know, uh, far exceeded that. We actually were able to redirect some money, and uh, there's some that they'll be taking with them on a possibility of helping start a new church. How exciting is that? It was as if the money was raining down on them. Uh, and what a lesson in trust that was for them to receive your gifts and your encouragement. So probably in August, uh, haven't decided the week yet, but we'll have Jim and Carol as a part of our worship to help share their story and how this uh, has built their faith and trust in God. Because I'll tell you, this has been a real faith builder for them. So I'm excited for that. So keep them in your prayers. Of course, the reason that Luther was with us last week is that uh, the three of us, along with uh, Carol and Catherine, or excuse me, Catherine and uh, Karen and Greg, uh, were at annual conference of the Desert Southwest of the United Methodist Church. And uh, golly, we're black, glad to be back with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, it was, would you describe it as interesting? It was challenging. Challenging, that's a good word. Um, I don't want to spend, I'm not going to spend a little lot of time on it today, but there will be some time uh, in the weeks to come that we will share in depth on that. Uh, this week I will have a summary going out on uh, the website and an email of what transpired through the, the three and a half days. Um, we will, I can tell you that there was some significant legislation, some of which we don't even know yet, that was tabled until a special annual conference called September 14th. So uh, there's a lot happening. Um, there's a lot happening that we don't know yet. There's a lot happening uh, daily, uh, nearly, that's changing. So uh, I would just ask you to keep uh, your church in prayer. Uh, the larger denomination is we try to figure out what's going to where we're going to head in the next uh, couple of years, especially as we prepare for uh, the general conference, worldwide general conference in 2020. So that's going to be a big event for us. So uh, a couple of comments there. I, really, uh, I thought everybody already knew about London. I did right before we started. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. got you covered, bud. Okay. okay, good. So let's pray real quick, would you? Lord, as we turn to your word, Lord, I pray that you would uh, speak through me as always to set me aside, that your word might be heard. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is the fifth church that I have served since becoming a pastor, uh, and in addition to the many years that I spent at uh, my home church, Trinity Heights and Flagstaff, and uh, I've been asked uh, on many occasions to take a uh, to comment or take a stand on both political and uh, uh, controversial topics that crop up in church and then impact the church from time to time. And often these are just vitally important topics for us. And you know, in my 25 years in law enforcement, I, a very significant portion of my time was spent as a mediator, as a coach, a parent figure on occasion, uh, to adults, not the kids, uh, an arbitrator, sometimes an enforcer. Uh, I spent a fair amount of time in front of city councils, uh, TV cameras, and large crowds of widely differing perspectives. Uh, so I've, I have some understanding a little bit of what it takes to bring uh, a diverse group together on a single focused uh, set of goals and objectives uh, to where we might have some common goals and, and uh, to a place of action. But it's in my theology that my understanding of God's character and work that I've come to know that God is so big that we are simply incapable as human beings of fully knowing everything about God. It's just not possible for us. 
Perhaps on the day that we stand face to face with Jesus, we'll finally realize and come to a point of realizing how big God is and really understanding how great his grace is. You know, they say there are around 30,000, 33,000 Christian denominations around the world. Think about that, 33,000 Christian denominations. In the United States, there are somewhere around 300,000 church buildings. And there's somewhere around 228 million Christians active and inactive in the United States. Why in the world do we think our church has it all right? I think it takes a little bit of arrogance to say something like, I understand the Bible and you are wrong and you're going to go to hell. <laughs> I think it takes a little bit of arrogance to say something like that. I've read the Bible more than once and every time I go back to a text, I learn more, I grow more, and I hear more from, from God. We're currently caught up in politics, let's admit it. Writer Philip Yancey noted that C.S. Lewis observed that almost all crimes of Christian history have come about when religion is confused with politics. Politics which always runs by the rules of ungrace allures us to trade away grace for power, a temptation the church has often been unable to resist. You see, as a society, we've often allowed, uh, as, a, as a group of people, as a church, we uh, have all often allowed secular politics to uh, influence our lives as Christians instead of using our lives and Christ's power to influence the secular world. Allowing contemporary culture to force us to change, we begin to move away from the practice of our faith that all sinners are in need of salvation and that salvation is available to all through the grace of Jesus Christ. Politics has polarized America and Christianity to the detriment of the kingdom. If God created each of us as unique individuals and consider the fact that none of us have the same fingerprints, we don't have the same DNA, and we don't have the same personalities, thank God for that. <laughs> Might that get, not give us a hint about how big God is? He loves diversity, but we always seem to want to put everything into a nice, neat little box where we can keep God under control, don't we? But in our hearts, we know we can't box God in. It's not his character, and it's not his way of love. This is why I don't put down other Christian churches. You see, God will use other churches, other means of worship, other styles of worship to reach people that we cannot reach. And conversely, we can reach people that they cannot reach. Doesn't mean that we do ministry side by side together. But if we're under the banner of Jesus Christ, then we can lift each other up in prayer and love each other. To take this position means I have to understand there are different ways to understand God's word. Now that's kind of an inflammatory statement perhaps. I believe God's word is truly divinely inspired, written by fallible humans, but which accurately and consistently and always points us to him. This is not to say there's inherently anything wrong in the way we do church. If we differ from others, we celebrate uh, a tradition that started with John Wesley but has morphed along the way a little bit. It's formulated through leaders such as Francis Asbury, Thomas Koch, Richard Allen, Anne Lutton, Agnes Smith. Yeah, early women preachers, right? Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> Theologians like Albert Outler and James Cone. Now, some of you might recognize those names as, as uh, some of our black Methodist leaders that have come across the, the ways. Uh, and significant contributions from hymn writers like Charles Wesley, of course, and Phoebe Knapp. And we can't forget Superman. 
yeah, you, did you know Superman was a, a Methodist? <laughs> Scout's honor. His writer, the writers of Superman may have been Jewish, but they wrote Superman and his family as Methodists. How about that? We've come to worship today. Amen. Amen. What is worship? Is it a few songs? Can be. Can be. Is it a great hymn or a great sermon elucidating God's word in ways that just stir your soul? Uh, is it the people we are with? Yes. yes. And no to each of those, too. You see, what I know worship to be, worship is singularly focused like a laser beam, not on us, but on God. On nobody else, but on God. But I know our minds wander. <laughs> we miss an intro to a song or one we don't know, and we get a little flustered sometimes. The sound isn't quite right in the, in the sanctuary, or the person sitting next to you didn't shower this morning. <laughs> Last night. Something distracts us. You see, the evil one doesn't want us to worship God. And so the evil one's going to continue to interrupt us. Worship, praise, adoration, glorification to the creator who gave us life, gave us freedom to choose our way and freedom to sin. Uh, sadly, we don't do such a great job of teaching our children and grandchildren and our loved ones how to worship. Let me tell you, you do a better job than many in this service because you're engaging the hymns and the music and what we're doing together in a special way. There is something different here. Amen. And even those who aren't singing, if you're engaging in the words of the music and, and the story, then you're worshiping. As your pastor, I treat this time as sacred. That doesn't mean we won't laugh together or cry together or grieve together because we do that too. Because God is the God of our emotions and our love and our laughter. He's the author of all of that. And when we grieve, he grieves alongside of us. This time is our time to worship God, not to be immersed in politics or which sin might be greater than another sin or who is right and who is wrong. We'll have ample time to have significant and meaningful conversations. And we might even include some worship but I hope you understand and will forgive me for not engaging in political commentary deciding what to do with our dirty laundry in worship. We've all got dirty laundry and we need to deal with, but we're in desperate need as a people of significant and authentic worship. Tor Heyerdahl, my name might ring a bell. Norwegian adventurer and ethnographer who set out in 1947 on a boat made of reeds. The Kontiki, to prove a theory that ancient peoples could cross vast stretches of open sea and open ocean. In 1970, he did it again with the Ra 2 expedition from the west coast of Africa to the Barbados in another papyrus raft. I read the Kontiki as a child and I just dreamed about the adventure that would be. Other adventures have set out in a variety of craft across the oceans from canoes to things that we wouldn't even consider a boat just across the sea. Some are obsessed with the sea, but you know it's not our home. Constantly moving, unpredictable, and always dangerous and incredibly seductive. What is better than watching the sun as it sets while you're sitting on a beautiful white sandy beach and thinking about God's glorious creation. Oh wait, we just slipped into worship on a beach. <laughs> That's the reality. You can be in worship wherever you are all the time. 
God has given us this model of worship in Psalm 107 through the psalm writer's experience, and I think we have much to learn here. Verse 1 in the NIV, it starts out, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Beautiful contemporary song that we sometimes sing. Uh, maybe not in this church, but we do sing it. <laughs> in, the, in the message, it reads like this. And you got you to gotta read it how the writer, how, uh, I think how Eugene Peterson understood it. Oh, thank God he's so good. His love never runs out. That's how Eugene Peterson understood this to be read. And I think that's how the psalm writer understand, wants us to understand it. Read the whole psalm. Read it out loud. Read it in different translations. Spend some time in it and let it teach you how to worship. Down to verse 23, some of you set sail in big ships. You put out to sea to do business in faraway ports. Oh, we set out in life in our big ship. We're in control. We're going we're gonna to impact the world. We're going to change the world. We're going to make things different. And we set out and the storms come. You shot high in the sky and the bottom dropped out. Your hearts were stuck in your throats. You were spun like a top. You reeled like a drunk. You didn't know which end was up. If you've ever sit out to sea on a small boat in a storm, you know how that feels. Has your life ever felt like that? Yeah, mine too. What did you do? Where did you go? Maybe someone came along to help you out, walk alongside of you. Somehow you came through the storm. There's a psalm that reads, through the valley of shadows. You see, it's through the valley of shadows. We don't stay there. We go back up another mountain. God's calling us through the valley of shadows. We don't stay there with God. And 107 goes on, and you were so glad when the storm died down and he led you to safely back to harbor. So thank God for his marvelous love, for his miracle mercy to the children he loves. You are his children. And you see, there's a response when we realize his work. When we see God and realize what he's doing with us, we worship. Lift high your praises, the psalm writer says. When the people assemble, shout Hosanna when the elders meet. All of this, the key which enables all our praise is a little Hebrew word, chesed. Translated as steadfast love, this is God's persistent, protective loyalty, reliability in keeping promises, mercy, loving kindness, and in many contexts, affection and care. In many ways, this is God's character, chesed. Psalm 107 is God's promise and work of taking humanity lost, broken, feeling tossed about into a, a storm or into a dumpster, lifted out, restored, cleaning and purifying us. In fact, Oscar Wilde wrote in his play, a woman of no importance wrote this line. The only difference between the saint and the sinner is that every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. It is that future that drives us to worship and to serve one another. And it's my promise to you that we will continue to worship with our eyes on God, our hands busy helping others, and our feet moving to the next mission. Are your eyes on God? Are your hands busy serving him? Are you ready to walk together to the next mission? Let us pray. Holy and gracious God. Oh, how we need to worship you. How we need to focus on you like a laser beam to realize that you are the creator of the universe who created us and you love us to the end of the earth and beyond. 
keep our hearts moving, keep our hearts focused on you. Lord, let us have hard hands to do the work that you've given to us. Calloused with the work of grace and peace and servanthood. Give us tough feet to walk the miles wherever you send us, however you send us. And watch over us, we pray, even now as we share in Holy Communion, that reminder and an ever-present gift of your grace poured out over us. So keep pouring your grace on us, Lord Jesus. We need it. We want to worship you. We love you, Lord. Help us to love you more. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I mentioned that several people have said that so much talk they can't really appreciate that. As we share in communion today, I want to encourage you to uh, keep your visiting down until you step out of the sanctuary. Let's keep this a sacred, holy time. So as people are coming to receive the gift of communion, that they can fully receive God's grace as they receive this gift. When he breaks the bread and says to us, this is what Jesus said in the break of the bread, I love you so much. I love you so much. It doesn't matter to me where you've come from, where you've been, only that I want you to go with me. So take this and eat this. Let me fill you with the love and peace that comes only from God. And then when the cup was poured, this cup of unending grace, wow, where would we be? You know, I get distracted and I sin. I know that surprises me. But because of the cup of grace, I can come back again. And once more, take another little step towards God's perfection, what he really intended for me. And so I come back. And so I invite you to come back too. So holy God, take these gifts of bread and the cup and make them be for us, your body, your blood poured out on us and in us and through us that we might be your people in a very hurting world. Lord, to help us build the kingdom of God for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.